totally worth it. Welcome back to another edition of the Sultan of Small Talk. I'm Chris Carbone. I need to tell you, we hit a milestone. It's just our first month and we've got like a hundred subscribers. I know we are blowing up the scene. How do you determine your worth? What you're really worth? <laughs> okay, let's go. Ready? How do you determine your worth? What accolades you really need to achieve in life? Let me tell you, it's not always easy. It is a common, concern for people starting out in their own business to properly charge what they are valued at and what they are worth and what those services are going to be valued by the consumer. Let's get into it today. It's going to be an exciting one and a ride. I only got this because it covers up this unsightly stain where we spilled some coffee earlier. I think it works perfectly for that. Okay, where are we today? Today's episode. It's all about worth, what your value is, what your net worth should be. You could write your own paycheck. Let's talk about that because that's gonna be exciting stuff. It was about 15 years ago. I was sitting eating breakfast with one of my best friends in the world. His name is Ray. Ray was telling me about this amazing new promotion, this amazing new job that he had as a private chef for a very wealthy family in New York City. I've always found him to be pretty cool and pretty intriguing, but when he told me he was making $120,000 as like a 30 year old, I'm like, what? That doesn't make any sense. I remember at that exact moment, I was just a little bit, just a hair younger than him and I was making about $50,000. So I decided right then and there, and I told him, if you could make $120,000, why couldn't I make $120,000? I think he smiled and like graciously continued his eggs, but probably didn't believe in me. But within one week, I said, I'm going to go ahead and make that dream a reality. And that's exactly what I did. But what had to change? I had to A, first believe that it could be possible. And looking at Ray, who was eating his eggs quite rudely and actually kind of Gross. In, no, not gross. The eggs weren't falling. Don't talk about eggs. He's a chef. He's a chef. He may be a chef, but he doesn't know how to eat is what I'm saying to you, right? He may be a chef. He might be able to prepare like an omelet, a souffle, but what he couldn't do is keep the eggs from falling out of his lips. It was gross, but he still made $120,000 and he was 30 years old. It didn't make any sense. Pause. <laughs> so I had to believe that if my friend Ray could do this. I could totally do this as well. When you think about it, how do you decide what your worth is? Sometimes if you're not very confident, you will diminish your value. And the only way to really aspire to greatness is to give yourself the freedom to realize that you are worth so much more than other people are bargaining for. Also, when you are in a sales position and you're trying to sell your services when you are brand new, you are more likely to go ahead and just be the cheapest game in town. That's what people want to do. They just want to like win the business. For example, my wife, when she started to do photography, she was starting to just give away her services, not really seeing the value. In fact, when I said, honey, how much did we get on that last job that you bid for? She goes, well, I didn't get any money per se. And I'm like, oh gosh, where is this going? But our kids can swim in their pool for the summer. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't know how we're paying the rent with the swimming pool scenario. Wait, this just in. Apparently we didn't even get it for the rest of the summer. It's just one time, one freaking time we can go to their swimming pool for the photography session. Wow, my wife is the killer salesperson. Everything I am teaching and I am trying to convey here, she is listening with deaf ears, I suspect. My wife had to see her own value. Sometimes you have to boost somebody up and have them see that people will spend real money and then they can see it for themselves. I got a friend of mine, his name is David. Just this last year, he got into the same industry that I am. In fact, he owns an office that we collaborate with in Seattle. And when he first started out, I asked him what some, what some of the rates were that he was charging for the various services that we perform. And he was telling me things that were just mind blowing, but not in the good way. He would say $625 and he was all excited about the money he was going to make. And I said, I don't think we'd even get out of the truck for less than $1,250. So you're not charging enough. So after he contemplated a bit, he would bump it up 
$800 and then he was at $1,000 and eventually he was charging what I said he should charge, which was $1,250 for the same service request and winning every one of those pieces of business. So when you think about it, I told him, you can just do less work and more meaningful work and more valuable work and just get out of your truck less and less times to make the same amount of money per month. Or you could do backbreaking work all the time just to make lesser profit margin. Now the margin's important, which kind of gets me back to what I forgot to tell you. When you're skating on thin ice, that's a problem. But when you're skating on thin margins for your business, that's a bigger problem because cash flow is essential for a business, especially a new one, to continue to thrive. Now, of course, there's the flip side of things, which is interesting. I talk about increasing the amount of money that you ask for to do the same service because you need to go ahead and realize that you are totally worth it. But the other thing which is interesting is I give away a lot of valuable information and I give away services too in an effort to go ahead and win them over. So that seems kind of like a juxtaposition and also like I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth, but realistically, you'll see that there's some serious value in doing this as well, and it's a good tactic. For example, nobody in my industry really seems to do too many free evaluations or free assessments. And the other thing that they don't seem to do is offer these evaluations after hours and during weekends. They like to do it Monday through Friday, more traditional business hours. So when you think about it, you can give some tremendous value just doing something that the other people are not willing to do. And doing it to work around their schedule makes a lot of sense without charging them how much would the project suffer if you're not a part of it? Think of things that way, as opposed to just what you can charge them. Stop thinking of what you're worth per hour. Nowadays that you have your own business, think about what you bring to the table per project. And that's a different way of uh, determining your total net worth. I don't, I don't know how excited you are about your business, but I'm super excited and this guy's excited for you.